Welcome everyone to the Vagina Talk Podcast. We are Dr. Alexis May Kimball and I am Dr. David Kimball. We're two double-boarded female pelvic reconstructive and cosmetic surgeons. This is the podcast where we have honest conversations and discuss important and often misunderstood topics. Our goal isn't just to answer taboo questions or probe into taboo-related issues, but it's really to promote healthy discussions. Hopefully that'll lead to healthier lifestyles. Hi, welcome to Vagina Talk. This is Dr. Alexis May Kimball and Dr. David Kimball, and we're here to discuss some of the kind of um, topics that are not commonly discussed at the dinner table. However, we feel that some of these taboo conversations and topics should be addressed. Um, We'll first start with Dr. Alexis Kimball and let her kind of introduce herself and tell us a little bit about herself and kind of what brought you into this field. Well, even though David here says that these are taboo topics, I think that we are both in a very unique position because in the work that we do, as female pelvic reconstructive surgeons and cosmetic surgeons. These are topics that we discuss with our patients day in and day out. So um, this is something that we, this is a conversation we would like to open up to all women to sort of share their thoughts, feedback, and also to educate our listeners and our patients uh, about how common these problems truly are. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting how common these problems are. Millions and millions of women, just even in the United States of America, develop incontinence, pelvic floor disorders, prolapse, all the things that we see on a very daily basis. You know, personally, I've been in this space for about 25 years, practicing and caring for women. Um, So I've seen a whole host of various pelvic floor issues over the course of my career. And one of the sort of the most um, disconcerting things that I've heard in my about a decade of practice is a lot of women who present often say they think they're the only ones. Am I the only one that has this problem? Things related to prolapse, for example, or like David said, incontinence, um, laxity, female sexual dysfunction, conditions surrounding the time of menopause and even the perimenopausal transition. Often um, after a patient meets me and sort of shares her story, one of the questions I commonly hear is, am I the only one with this problem? So it's a privileged position for us to be in a place or as their doctor, I feel privileged to be in a position um, where there's a whole subspecialty dedicated to a lot of these conditions. What do you think, David? Would you agree or do you feel like, do you encounter that similar question or sort of what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think very commonly women come into our office and they're like, I didn't even know you guys existed. I never even heard of your specialty before. We are such a relatively new subspecialty under the umbrella of OBGYN that a lot of people are just not familiar with this hybrid between urology and gynecology. Uh, It's a very unique but very brilliant subspecialty because those two systems are interconnected in many ways on many levels, right? Right, right. absolutely. Um, I would say it's hard describing sort of what we do oftentimes, and a patient really seems like they have to sort of go around in circles to find us. Agreed, absolutely. And I think that's one of the reasons why we decided to kind of like step out of the box a little bit here and do something as bold as the vagina talk. So vagina talk touches upon, of course, the vagina without a doubt, but it expands way beyond that, don't you think? Right. Yeah, women's bodies, women's state of mind, women's health, women's wellness, all things related to um, that journey of being, feeling like a woman or identifying as a woman. Yeah, that's where we want Vagina Talk to kind of break through some of these barriers that have been built up through the course of time. And to say, you know what, as a woman, as a female, as one who identifies as a female, I have the right to certain things in my life. I have the right to be beautiful in the areas that are intimate to me. I have a right to express those areas, to understand them and explore them. And that's kind of what we're really here to do is kind of break the ground, as I keep saying. Right. And I think what makes 
you know, David and I are very unique, not just being pelvic reconstructive and cosmetic surgeons or what is commonly known historically as urogynecologists, but I think when we meet our patients and our patients seek surgical care, especially for a lot of prolapse conditions, and let me just rewind to sort of explain what prolapse is for those who don't understand. I describe it as a feminine hernia. Hernias exist different part, in different parts of the body, but when it occurs in the vagina, the vagina starts to really drop and fall, taking the organs that neighbor it with it, usually the bladder, the small bowel, the rectum, and sometimes even the perineum. So when our patients get to us, oftentimes it's advanced enough that they're pretty bothered and they're really seeking surgical correction. What I find is very unique about us is that we want to repair and correct the dysfunction and recreate function for our patients in terms of vaginal health and sexuality, sexual function. However, we also care about the aesthetics of it. We want it also corrected. So leaving it, not just feeling good, feeling functional, but looking as best it, as it can, which makes us very unique, even amongst urogynecologists. And I think that's where we develop the slogan, you know, beautiful from the inside out, right? It's not just beautiful on the inside of the vagina, but you need to be beautiful on the outside of the vagina. Because like one of our podcasts and, you know, reels have talked about before is that, you know, the vulva is the face of the vagina. It's the new yeah. face. And the vagina <laughs> is really just the heart, right? Exactly. It's how you feel. So it's really important to combine that function with the beauty and we could say that commonly in a lot of our patients, I, we often hear like, oh, the, the way it looks is not a priority to us, which is very different when we talk about with our patients, you know, their face or their abdomen, you know, oftentimes it's how it looks. So I just find that the disconnect there is very interesting being a female myself and just talking to my female patients, how there is very much a disconnect. We sort of want to bring that together and say that it's actually okay to say, I want to look good, just as good down there as I do up on my face. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think one of the unique perspectives that we bring to this space is the fact that we are a married couple. So as a result of that, you know, sexuality is an important part of our existence. Intimacy is an important part of our existence. And I know as a male how important it is to me that, you know, I, I enjoy that part of our life. And I want to make sure others can have that same opportunity, the same luxury that I do. So we kind of bring a very unique perspective onto this space. I think so too, both professionally and personally. Thank you so much for listening to Vagina Talk Podcast. If you want to learn more, you can find us on our web, www.kimballcenterforpelvicwellness.com. See you next time. Bye.